So if you watch this video about how we're 99.9% .9 the same, I use the example of ABO blood groups. Now, a question came up about the RH blood group and whether or not we can see that in genetics as well. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and this is a segment of DNA. Our blood is really complicated. Now my mom was a med tech and so she actually taught us a little about this. It's not as simple as a positive, a negative. There's actually more than two or three dozen different types of blood groups. Now the majority of them don't matter for most of the things that we do medical wise, but they all play a role in classifying our blood. And one of those is the RH or that negative or positive that we have on our blood group. So where did this come from? Well, the RH actually stands for rhesus factor. And it is from a set of experiments that was done about 80 years ago on rhesus monkeys. Now those experiments had to do with clumping together of blood cells. And it used some serum from rhesus monkeys with some rabbits or mice. Now, a few years later, there were some other experiments that were done on humans that also involved this clumping together of blood cells by the same scientists. And they remembered these experiments from the rhesus monkey and so used the same terminology, called it the RH factor or the rhesus factor. Two decades after that, it was realized that the serum in the rhesus monkey was actually different in makeup than the RH factor that was being used and classified in humans. However, because science is funny that way, we've already been using the RH factor for humans for two decades, so we kept that terminology and we changed the terminology that we use in rhesus monkeys. So that is where the RH factor comes from. Now, unlike the ABO bud group, which is controlled by one gene, there's actually five genes that control the overall RH factor. The major one is RHD, but there's also RHAG, RHBG, RHCG, and RHCE. Now these five genes aren't even right next to each other. Three of them are on chromosome one, one of them's on chromosome six, and one of them is on chromosome number 15. But like I said, the important one is RHD, which is on chromosome number one. Now this RHD gene is about 58,000 letters long. And if you remember the video about the ABO blood group, that gene is only 1,000 letters long. So this is much longer and actually a much more complex protein than the ABO protein. So then we get into the classification, whether you are RH positive or RH negative. And just like the difference between blood group A and blood group O, there's a single SNP that will indicate whether you're RH positive or RH negative. Now that SNP is called RS590787. And if you have a T in that location on either one of your genes, then you're going to be RH positive. However, if you have C's on both of your genes, then you're going to be RH negative. So now that you know the SNP, can you look it up and actually see from your genetic test whether or not you are RH positive or negative? Well, in 23andMe, you can't. That's not one of the SNPs that they test for. I haven't looked into any of the other tests, but you can do that if you've tested with Family Tree DNA or with Ancestry or with MyHeritage. Use that RS590787 to look up that SNP and see if they've tested for it. If they have, and you have a T in that location, you're going to be RH positive. If you have two Cs, you're going to be RH negative. And that's a little bit more about the RH blood group and how we can see it in genetics. Don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss another episode of Family History Fanatics. Be sure to check out our website, www.familyhistoryfanatics.com, so that you can find out about upcoming e-conferences that we're going to be a part of.